I'm a huge Klopp admirer. So when the question... But you're not him, having him as a legend. Is he above Wenger? Is he above Mourinho? Or do they all... But Wenger... Or just get an endless list of legends that people... Wenger never won a Champions League. If you could say I've been a manager that's won the Champions League, I think that puts you in that legendary capacity. I think he's the best manager around. Um, so it flies in the face. Better than Pep? I, I do for different reasons. If they make the wrong decision, they slip like Steven Gerrard did in 2014. The league gets escaped. I would look at Postacoglu. I, I, just, I think he's got the chops. I think he's got the personality. Mm. Welcome to episode nine of Simon and Sunes. Graham. Good afternoon. Nice to see you. I understand that you are going to kick us off today. Yeah. Blimey. What is this nonsense that you you don't think Jurgen Klopp is a Premier League legend? Do you think he is then? Yeah. Why? Well, given given his tenures at Liverpool, I think to win a Champions League and a Premier League, that puts you in that category. And the job he's done, he's now into his second team and a team that does it, um, does it whoever like... gets that job after he leaves is walking into a, a fabulous situation. What, what I said was the other day was, I think the legend status, I think you and I agree with the status. It's overused. Yeah, overused. So like world-class players, overused, thrown around. So I pushed back against the idea and I was more talking about English football than just the Premier League because I can see the argument in my ear now as I think about it in my mind's eye about a Premier League because the Premier League is only 30 years old. Mm. When you look back on the, the, the English top divisions, it's difficult to make a case for Jurgen Klopp to be a you know, an English Premier League or an English top division legend with all so the take body the Premier work. League out of it and say, is, is he a, is he a legend, legend of, of our... Yeah. yeah. I, I think he's a legend for a Liverpool. Yeah. I'm not a Liverpool fan. So I don't have to look at it through the prism of Liverpool going, well, we didn't I... win a Premier League for 30 years. He's, he's delivered that to us. He's won a Champions League and he's won, you know, FA I Cup. I think winning League those Cups. two trophies push him into that legendary status. But what is a legend then? I mean, I mean, if you look at if you look at the guys that you played for, you didn't play for Shankly, you played for Bob Paisley, didn't you? And then you played for Joe Fagan. Yes, right. And you look at Ferguson. I mean, okay, if I'm if I'm well, me, me are obvious legends, but I just think this is maybe with my Liverpool head on. He's he's a perfect fit for Liverpool, perfect fit for the Agreed. football club for the city. Agreed. Um, but that's Liverpool. Yeah, but, but I, I was think, asked a question about. But I think the those Premier two. League. True, how many managers win a Champions League? Not many. But, but do, do you look? Okay, look. I think anywhere in any sort of cut across you. But I think if you win a if you win a Champions League in any any league, you win a Champions League where you're playing the Italian one, French one, Spanish one, it puts you into the legendary legend. Yeah, uh, that's it. I think so. But then 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 you, then what do you put? What class do you put? Ferguson in him. Oh. What class do you put uh, Guardiola in that have won multiple Premier Leagues, that have won well, they're, trebles? They're, they're legends. Was that a, so there's a different find version another of word legends for it. in there. Yeah, yeah, find another word for it. Right, well, that's my point, because I'm looking at a game, remarkable manager. I think he's defined Liverpool over the last nine mm -hmm. years. I think the team is an absolute reflection of his personality, mm -hmm. from charisma through to dynamism, through to the, you know, the intensity that they play at. His aggression, the show. Yeah, yeah. Do you think um, do you think he was fortunate? Because when he comes in, right, he comes in off the back of Brendan Rodgers. Brendan Rodgers was a, was a decision that no one was inspired by, but he got them close and probably should have won that league with Sturridge and Suarez. Suarez. And um, who was the third one? Well, Steven Gerrard was there. No, no, three up top. Sturridge, Suarez and Sterling. And yeah. Sterling, thank you. Sterling, Sturridge, and everyone thought they should win that league. And they, you know, obviously, Stephen Gerrard slips and the league gets away from them. I think it was a Crystal Palace game. That well, they only choose three all, yeah. But, but Brendan next season stinks the place out. Klopp comes in and for three years doesn't win anything, loses all the finals that he's in. And out of the ether, they get a transfer deal that allows Coutinho to go for 150 million quid, or best part of it, because Neymar went for 200 million quid PSG. to PSG. Do you think that was a bit fortunate? Because yes. Because out of it comes two players. Alisson Van Dijk. Yeah. Transformed his, his team. Transformed his Liverpool team. I mean, we know how good they've been since they arrived at the club. And I think that's the kind of luck you need occasionally. Yeah. Put yourself in a way of luck. You know, Coutinho was a... He, he found the English game hard. Then he goes to Barcelona and he ends up not being 
and the team there comes back to Villa and struggles. So, you know, for them to get that kind of money at that time, a big slice of luck. I'm a, I'm a huge club admirer. So when the question... But you're not them, having them as a legend. I'm debating because I get, I bristle when I, like you do to some extent, when I hear world-class thrown around, we just said that. And when I hear legend status, because I think it's something that, that is over a period of, and I get, if, if you're a Liverpool fan, you say, this is a legend for our football club. If I'm a neutral, neutral, not mutual, if I'm a neutral, I'm looking at it again, well, is he above Wenger? Is he above Mourinho? Or do they all, Wenger, or do we just get an endless list of legends that people... Wenger never won a Champions League. No. Right. I just think that one competition, whether it's me overvaluing it, but I think there's so much hype and interest and all the glamour surrounding the, that Champions League. But what's that got to do with Nowadays. Because that's well, he's won that as well. Yeah, but... And he, and the first time Liverpool had won it in 30 years. Right, so then Thomas Tuchel must be a legend then. I think, yeah. He won, did he win the Champions League? Yeah. But I, I just think it's such a a unique group to be in. If you could say I've been a manager that's won the Champions League, I think that puts you in that legendary capacity. Just that, that given, category. Given that you won the European Cup, which is what, what do you think is better? Did you think the European Cup that you played in was a more difficult tournament than the Champions League that they're now playing in? Because first of all, in the Champions, is it? Well, you you, you know. Um, Okay, once it gets to the group out, the outside the group stages and into the knockout stages, one bad night can cost you everything. When I played in the European Cup, yeah. Champions Cup, um, you know, one bad night could cost you because there was no group stages. Is it harder? Is it more difficult? People play more games now, but then they have bigger squads to deal with that. The big clubs. Um, what you would say is that the English teams that are that are winning the European Cup now. So the English team that win the Champions League now are not really English teams, are they? What, because it's just it's, foreign managers, foreign ownership, foreign it's, players? Yes, it's, everything's foreign. And I'm right. not I'm not criticising that. But when Aston Villa were winning it, when Forest were winning it... And Liverpool were winning it. And Liverpool were winning it. They were, they were British teams. Mm. And that's the difference. If you were playing now... If you were playing now... if you Given that you're never playing now, but if you, as a former player... Looking at the two competitions, which would you prefer to play in? The Champions League or the European Cup? How can I pick? I mean, I won it three times. You know, people no, say... No, because you can see both formats. You, you, you know, you're looking at it going, well, tell you what, potentially one's more difficult than the other. There's well, more glamour and more hype and more dough now because of the Champions League. I'd but like as a to, player, which would you prefer to I play? I would in? like to play in the game today. I actually think it would be easier to play in the game today. The way the surfaces are the way the referees are, I think, and the way midfield players are allowed to play in the modern game, or a lot of us on the halfway line. You know... Oh, you're you, wouldn't have, you, wouldn't have had, you wouldn't be able to play with any intensity, though. Well, it would, yeah. So, oh, you're a midfield player. Yeah, you're a midfield player. Yeah. What are you, oh, I'm an attacking midfield player. Do you score goals then? Oh, no. Mm -hmm. Midfield players, by definition, have to do a bit of everything. The modern midfield player today gets the ball, a lot of them get the ball off an easy pass off their back three, back four, allowed to turn with it and go square with it. I've taken, you, I've taken off on a tangent because I want to go back to Klopp, right? Because I was trying to get the... Because you're, you're, you're adamant that Klopp should be defined as a legend. So, so I'm gonna, do you think he's underachieved then? Well, it depends by who standards you're setting. Given the profile and recognition, the two managers in the Premier League that are meant to be the best managers and that everyone looks at, including me, as a blueprint for if you beat these two guys, you're going to win things. And then you say, well, Klopp has been at Liverpool for nine years. He's won one Premier League, one Champions League, and I understand the point that you're making, and I'm not diminishing it. One FA Cup, one League Cup, and he's got two other tournaments, that the World Club Championship, which I don't know what you value that at, um, but it's another set of trophies. I think there is a case to suggest that all the profile and all the recognition and the legend status and all the adoration is not necessarily matched by an enormous amount of achievements? Or do you just think I'm being unfair? Well, I think you have to look at what net spend he's had. It's, it's a fraction of what City have, City have spent in that time, Man U, Chelsea, and he's still be successful. Where the, I think he's, I think you may see this all the time. 
The number one thing you have to get right at a football club is recruitment. And I think they've been better than anyone else for the money they've spent in this period of time at Liverpool. And I, you know, I, we've already factored in that money got for Coutinho and he gets Alisson and Van Dijk and that changed Liverpool. That made them a very different team overnight. But I think the, the recruitment at Liverpool has been outstanding in this time there. Well, I think, you know, again with Klopp, I, 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 for me, I, you know, by me, I push back against things like legend and other things because I think it's got this media feel to it where there's no substance behind it and it's being thrown around easily. It's not because I resist the urge to give Jurgen Klopp the due respect that I think he deserves. Um, I worry for Liverpool with Klopp now, but I think they'll be fine this season because I think that they're self-starters in that dressing room. I think that, as we've spoken about before, there are personalities in there that hold themselves mm -hmm. to account that the manager doesn't need to deal with, knows they can deal with That's themselves. The proper players do. Yeah, absolutely. And you and I have discussed that. And I think they'll be fine um, in whatever they do this season. They may win four. I think it'll be difficult, but I think they'll certainly win two. But the personality of this team is so much defined by Klopp. Mm. It really is almost an embodiment of him. And I worry that the legacy of Klopp might be diminished by the fact that this team is really him. See, see, as a manager, you don't get a job very, very rarely. And this is an exception. Very rarely does a manager walk into a football club um, where things are going to be handed to him on a plate. The team's going forward. The age is the right age. They should only get better. Um, normally, you're walking into a job because the, you know, the roof's caving in. Mm -hmm. Now, whoever gets the Liverpool job next time around, his first, his first team talk is, I'm not looking to change anything. Just keep doing what you've been doing. And OK, as a new manager, you maybe want to introduce a couple of new players. And I'm sure that would happen with a new manager. The, the biggest challenge the new manager has, as I see it, is getting Salas to sign on a new two-year contract. And then I think the future for the next two or three years is, is, in, is, um, is safe for Liverpool. I think this is a fabulous job for whoever gets it walking in. And I know there'll always be that Klopp shadow first time they get beat. Mm -hmm. Second time, I thought, I'll always be a well, that might not happen under Jurgen, but the big shoes to fill, but what a job for someone. Do you reckon, um, I mean, you, you've... Do you, do you think he's, you think, you actually think he's underachieved? No, I don't think he's underachieved. Uh, I think there's a case to suggest that there could have been more, that, that they could have won more. And I think given, I mean, it's, it's ridiculous to suggest because Liverpool haven't won a Premier League for 30 years. I think they defended their Premier League poorly in the season where mm. I thought they were brilliant in winning that Premier League. And the, se the season they came back and they defended it poorly. Um, and when I, when I look at the roll call, because we've got this embarrassment of riches that is constantly reminded of what Guardiola is doing, and you make the point, and it's a valid point, that uh, they, he, doesn't, he hasn't had the same dough. But it's more to do with the sort of, the over-sentimentalisation of the media going, look at Klopp, he's a legend. And I go... Well, I yeah, Pep won four trophies in English football. But Pep walked into a team that had won the league under Pellegrini and Mancini. Yeah, Grant. He was walking into a very healthy Grant's football team. club. And, 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 and Klopp had three years to get himself together and has gone on and, and spent, won. And spent a fraction of the money. Yeah, no, I understand all right, that. All right, I, mean, well, I believe they had the opportunity to go to United. Do you? Well, I think his wife um, was quoted recently <coughs> saying that she didn't think it was right at the time. If he had gone to United, do you think he would have transformed them the same way? I don't know. What do you think? I mean, look, he, he got three years at Liverpool. And whichever way you cut it, he did get three years before he won anything. Yeah. He got three finals. If that had been Man United... I think he would have survived. Got... Yeah, I think he would have survived. You reckon? Yeah, I think, you know, he um, manages the crowd really well. You know, he gets the crowd... With them very quickly. But you know Liverpool He's, crowd, and Liverpool crowd and Man United it, crowd are not cut from the same cloth, are they? I think they are in terms of winning football matches, because that, that's ultimately what they want to see. But yeah, well, Jürgen's been the perfect fit for Liverpool. Mm. Abrasive, passionate, you know. Intense, charismatic yeah, yeah. leader. He's, and I think, yeah, I think that would have worked at Man United as well. Yeah, I don't know. I think the problem with Man well, United... They would, he would have had a lot more money to spend at United. Sure, sure. Would, um, he, would he have had Michael Edwards at... Aim Michael Edwards at Man United. He, he, there's a few, you know, stars aligned for yeah, him I would, I would, to be successful. Look, I'm not suggesting that he wouldn't have been successful at Man United because I happen to believe that, in my view, I think he's the best manager around. 
Um, so it flies in the face. Better than Pep? I, I do for different reasons because I think he has to work with a different, as we've as you've mentioned, different level of resource. And the brand of football that Jurgen wants to play is more interesting for me on an individual level. And me. And I, you'd expect yeah. me to say as a Liverpool supporter, but, you know, I, 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 yeah, I prefer watching Liverpool at their best to City at their best. Do you, do you worry for Liverpool, given that the, the Klopp era comes to an end? I don't worry for them this season, as you and I have discussed. But the fellow that comes in, a bit like the United job, for different reasons, is a bit of a poison chalice. A bit like following Wenger at Arsenal for Unai Emery was a poison chalice. Do you worry that Liverpool could become a poison chalice for the next guy coming in? Well... <clears throat> If you're offered that job at this time, the first thing you would look at is a group of players he's got. They're sitting top of the league yeah. right now as we speak. So they'll be talking to people right now. So the team's top of the league, chance of winning the league. Um, the age group, the quality, as I said already, the biggest challenge for any manager, as I see it, is getting Salah to renew his contract. Where the lure of Saudi Arabia will become too great for, for Salah. Salah. We'll have to wait and see. But I think this it's a great job for someone. It is a great job for someone. Yeah, they're not perfect. There's a couple of players there that I think are squad players. They're not main men. But I think you factor in the, the players that are there, the youngsters he's got coming through, that club's in great nick. And that is a great job for someone. And of course, there'll be hiccups on the road. It'll be a natural. They're big shoes to fill. So mm. that that's something, if, if you're the new manager, you're going to have to contend with it. When you do lose a game, oh, if you're going to win, we wouldn't have lost that. Mm. that that'll certainly be around for a while, but um, it's a great job for someone. Current team, I mean, do you think they're going to win the league this year? I think they'll win it or they'll finish second. I think if you're going to win it, you're going to have to finish in front of them. I don't think they're the best Liverpool team we've seen, but they're a very dangerous Liverpool team simply because they've got lots of goal scorers. They've got a top goalkeeper, that's but Rich after his you know, recent mistake at the mistake. Arsenal. But they all make mistakes, aren't they? Of course they do, that's yeah. the ones we remember, that's what you remember about a goalkeeper. Um, he's been fabulous, Van Dijk's fabulous. Um, I don't think you can look at Liverpool and say they're not missing Salah. Any team in the world will miss Salah. Right. So you get him back as quick as you can. What do you like on Nunes? Do you like him? Yeah. What do you like about him? I just think he's a rampaging centre forward to... He'll score seven goals in one game one day. Right. And and you'll be turning your hair out like the last time out against Chelsea where at the Woodwork four times in one game. I just think he's someone that you would not enjoy playing against. He always wants to run in there and he's quick and he's aggressive. Diaz is a fabulous player. Um... Jota I really like but the icing on the cake the top man is not there right now he comes back I wouldn't be writing Liverpool out of the championship race not at all not up not until it's mathematically out of order because I know what it's like at that football club the crowd demand you're you're at it every single time you go and cross a white line I'm not sure I mean I'm 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 not sure about what they do next I can't work out in my mind's eye what their course of action is, because I think this is a really big moment for Liverpool and for John Henry's, because the the when they buy Liverpool and they take it over from Hicks and Gillette and all the that was going on there, and they put Kenny in, right, and it didn't work for lots of reasons, and, and I don't think that was particularly Kenny's fault. They bring Brendan in, and we discussed that, and I think that was a period of time where they had a chance, and then they fell away. A Jurgen has taken them to a different level. I think this next um, decision for John Henry could be as pivotal. If they make the wrong decision, they slip like Stephen Gerrard did in 2014. The league gets escaped. Mm. If they slip again and make the wrong managerial decision, all of this work from Klopp evaporates. And I'm, I'm reticent about Alonso and this idea. That so you think that they should go down this romantic route? Well, it's only romantic if... What's romantic about it? Because someone played for you once before. They either can do the f-ing job or they can't. Mm. I don't think there's any romance in it. I think there's either someone has got the ability to do it. He looks like he's doing a decent job at Leverkusen. 
And it's done, I don't know what it says about Leverkusen that they've already priced into their thinking that in his contract, if a bigger club comes in for you, we'll just let you go. Mm. I don't know how that works. But you got any views on who they should put in there? No. No. no I'm not sure what direction they'll go in. But I mean, they'll have, they will, they will, by now, they will have narrowed it down to. Was yours a two. romantic appointment at Liverpool? Was that, did you consider it romantic? No, I I am. Um, I made the mistake. I'm a Glasgow Rangers. I hadn't won the league in nine years. We do really well over a five year period. I'm asked to go back there twice. I say no twice. Third time, I say I'll come and talk to you. I shouldn't have done that at that time because I felt Liverpool. You know, when you're young and you're f you're full of beans and you think that you know you know the answers to everything. I knew they were in difficulty. I thought I'll go back. I'll sort that out. That won't yeah. be a difficult job. It was too much for me. It was too difficult. But it wasn't romantic. You went there because... No, it wasn't. No, no. no so that's my point. So when the classification yeah. of the question is, do you think it would be a romantic appointment that gets Alonso in? And I think it would be the right one if he can do the job. Well, you you won't know. Well, he's not got a long sort of... Resume. No. Um, and I'm not sure how strong the, the German league is. Um, but the only upside, or the only advantage he has over others is that he knows the football club. Should I tell you what I'd put in there? Go I'll tell you what I'd really think about putting in there. And you might say, ooh, probably a bit early. I would, this will never happen because they'll never let it happen. But I would look at Poster Coglu. I, I, I think he's got the chops. I think he's got the personality. Mm -hmm. I, know he, I know we've made this joke about why they call him Big Ange because he isn't particularly big. I know sometimes he doesn't look down the barrel of the camera quite the same way that Jürgen does. But I think from a personality point of view, a relatability point of view, and a style of football point of view, I think he'd be not a bad fit. Mm -hmm. I suppose we'll never let it happen. And he has one thing. I know it's only the Scottish League. But he has one things. What do you think of that? I like him. I mean, he's calm. You know, he's, he's consistent, isn't he? He's never there and he's never there. And he has a, a common sense approach when you hear, it was about like Jürgen losing the game at Arsenal last week. It was a, like a, a common sense, you know, we didn't play well enough. Yeah. We made mistakes. There was no going crazy about why you lost the game. I know he mentioned Kanati's booking. Yeah. Which I agree with. No, I don't think that was. And booking with him and have arts on the halfway line, just over the halfway line. But I think it was a common sense approach to my team's lost the game. And I and I think Postacoglu goes down the same road. It's it's not peaks and troughs. It's always a. See, I looked at it the other way, and I, just, I don't know if I'm getting caught up with some of the media. I looked at the other way. And I thought but you are a media tart now. So there's every I'm chance. Not, I'm that. not. I'm not. I'm, I'm a I'm a busy sod in the media, but I'm not a media tart. I I looked at. Jürgen Klopp and I thought to myself I wonder if you're a little bit calmer because big decisions have been made yeah. and you're a little bit more relaxed about it we'll see we'll see if it, I'm going to ask you one more thing before we close off this subject I don't think fire's going on him no I don't think it would have done I think the, I think the, people like Klopp will leave you wanting more not less mm. I think he'll want to drive out the door having cleaned up mm. if he can get four trophies and go see ya yeah. remember that I think he's the case but how big is this? I mean, you going back to what I asked you about going from Rangers to Liverpool. And I asked you that because the the, the, the categorisation of your question was: Is it romantic? And I wanted to see if you thought it was romantic. Of course, it's not romantic, right? But how big and how much pressure is going into Liverpool to manage that club? Well, listen, I followed Kenny. You know, Kenny. If you go back to Shanks, to Bob Paisley, to Joe Fagan, to Kenny. You know, that was sort of four. Manager has all been very successful. You know, I walked into a dressing room, the majority of them were over 30, so I knew I had a big job to do. Um, and I found it very difficult to to um, to work there. Mm. So whoever gets the job this time is falling on very... The expectation, because that's why I'm asking you. Whoever... Maybe not Liverpool feel like the same sort of expectation, yeah, except Liverpool feels like the fans yeah, yeah, but the last few managed, for you. But the last few managers that man knew have not had to deal with a 10 year, 20 year period of success. Mm. It's just been flirting with that odd right. cop. So timing's so, everything. Yeah, right? so, so this, this, whoever the new, guy is, like, the new guy is going into Liverpool is under pressure. The, as I said, the big shoes to fill. Because in Jurgen's time at Liverpool, even if they don't win a trophy this year, it's still big shoes to fill. Okay. Because his legacy will be around for a long time. And it's up to the new guy to enhance it. Yeah. And you, as you say, He's got a decent platform to jump off, hasn't he? Decent. That's right. an understatement. That's it for this week's episode of Simon and Sunis, or Sunis and Simon, as Graham would prefer. We've analysed Klopp and his legendary status, and we'll see you next time, one o'clock next Monday.